So this is just gonna be some super quick, super simple dry brushing we're gonna do here. And basically a dry brush, all that means is you use a very, very, very small amount of paint, so little that it, the brush itself is almost dry. Obviously it's not, because there is a little bit of paint on there, but not a lot. And all we're really going to do is just drag it across the peaks on these dirt spots. And basically, once you can start to see that there's color on there, you're done. And as you can see, the just lets that little bit of dark color in the recesses, which is what we're going for. We want it to look still like the ground might be wet in some places. Although there's obviously some crusty mud starting to form on the top here. And when you do a dry brush right, you uh, usually you don't have to go back for paint very often. I think we're getting pretty close. Building these up, and then we're going to go back with one lighter color and finish them off. Now it'll be time for some cool grass effects, and these guys will be effectively finished. And where I went on thick with some of these, it's still drying in the middle, but that should not affect anything of any importance while we do this. And once in a while, that happens. We get a little too much, and we'll end up just putting some grass on that. No worries. Little things like that aren't a big deal.
So pretty much done with this layer. So that's the jack bone. Or, I'm sorry, that's the bootstrap leather. And then this is the jack bone. This is just a nice light tan color. Almost has a little bit of a gray tint to it. Really? We just want to add to the very peaks of everything. We don't want to completely cover up everything that we did previously, that's for sure. Because uh, you can see this just goes super fast. Again, we're just going for the impression of drying blood is what this is really here for. Close. I can feel it. Get the little rocks. Are this phase is done now? Just uh, glue and grass. So, how does that work? Let's see. Let's get these guys. Give me some space. Need my space, bros.
Um, so this is my this is my little formula here. We'll probably ah, that actually might be enough. Um, that's a combination of a couple of different products. Let's get my terrain stuff over here. Um, we're going to be using some Elmer's glue all. And we're going to water that down just a little bit. Also going to be using some various bits and pieces here of basing materials. Let's see. Um, this grass that I'm using here is just a mix between winter dead and arid. So I didn't really, I mean, I could have just used the winter dead actually probably would have been okay, but I wanted that little bit of lighter color in there too. Hello, Shuli. How are you? My day keeps getting better. are going to add some water to the glue. That should be enough. And the goal when you add water to PVA is just to get it nice and runny. It starts out a little bit more concentrated than you need it. And then we get a shitty old brush like this one here. Uh, and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to paint this on in all these spots where we didn't do... Where we didn't do the dirt in the previous step. Actually, I'm going to throw my glasses on so I can see in the middle there a little bit better. And then once that step is done, just put a bunch of that on there. Tap it off. There's a couple other techniques you can use to apply this stuff that'll make it stand up a little bit better. I've never really concerned myself with that. But if you want, I'm sure the internet is full of advice. And then uh, you can kind of top this off with a little bit of super glue and the tweezers I didn't think I was going to need, so I don't remember where I put And so these these are supposed to be self gluing, but I always like to put just a little bit of super glue right on the bottom. And then just find a little suitable spot where he needs. Cool little tuft of grass hanging out. Kind of obscures his little ball, but that's alright. You can see it from other angles. And that's that's what a mostly finished base looks like. The only last thing we have to do, ah, for these guys, 
is just paint up, clean up the rim so that it's uniform. And now we're going to go through... I'm actually going to save the little static grass tufts until after we're done with the, all of this here. So we'll just crank through these guys. They shouldn't take too long. That's my favorite song. It used, used to be. Oh yeah, yeah, to, to do them to the level that I'm doing them. I mean, you could skip a lot of these steps. Like this, what I'm doing right now is fully optional. Um, to my eye, it, it, it helps make a model look complete and finished, but you, by no means you have to do this. You could, uh, you could actually leave them just at this. You could do the whole thing mudded up and uh, you could just paint the base brown and just be happy with it. And then there's there's people that go way beyond what I'm doing. Like, I'm still in the moderate skills at best. Hey, Uncle Toad. You can't skip it all. <laughs> Ouch. That means you have to do it all. Every last thing. No skipping steps. down in there with this or it will look a bit funky Another step you can do, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to or not, um, you can actually go through with very, very, very watered down Elmer's glue and spray over the static grass, and that seals the hell out of it like it'll never come off.
Missed a spot. Couldn't obscure the gravestone there, that was sacrilege. We need to know his name was X with a skull on top. It's a very strange name, but I'm sure he must come from a foreign culture. Hey Toad, uh, I actually got to go out and fight this week. That was fun. I haven't been in the armor in months. It's hot as hell. It's been in like the 90s here, but... It's cool to actually get out. The only minor complaint I have with the grass that I came up with is it doesn't contrast quite as much with my rocks, but eh, what can you do? Guess that's what you get when you're going for like a dead wasteland, right? bunch of it in spots I didn't want it and none of it where I did want it. <laughs> I should probably turn off my mic when I blow those off. God, this guy's a noob, he keeps blowing into the mic.
kind of slow and steady wins the race here. Oops, hope I didn't bang the camera there. We're moving pretty quick though. We're super close to being done. Uh, six more left. We're getting there. Then we'll go through and do some little applique's on some of them. Finish up a rim or two, just to show you guys what the fully finished looks like. And we're there. Oh man, you should try. Like, the, the trick, when it comes down to it, and, and I hope it's been pretty clear, is like, like f there are times where you'll, you'll try to do things pretty fast, and you know, maybe you, you're trying to get ready for a tournament, and you want to have your models painted, or uh, you just don't want to put a lot of detail into them, and you can totally do that. But for me, this is really just about sitting, relaxing, and just enjoying the process. And when, when you get to that point, painting, I think, is the most fun. But yeah, I mean, you can just start with one model. Um, you can go by... You can go by just about anywhere and find, like, just something to, to putter around with. If you don't want to put the model together, you can find uh, used models on eBay. Uh, my, my buddies at Shiv Games Utah have an eBay store, and they sell all used stuff. Um, so you just go buy something cheap and used from them and just kind of play around with it. You have lots of different options, but I enjoy it. I think the painting is a hobby is, is worthwhile, and then, you know, if you have other hobbies that it ties into, like the wargaming I do and stuff, then it becomes even more rewarding. It's nothing quite like playing a miniature tabletop game with all painted models. Um, so, I mean, ent seriously entry level, like right now they have a little kit for painting these ghost dudes, 
So you could go buy that. I think it's uh, 30 bucks, maybe 40, and it's like several paints. It's like basically every different paint you would need to go through. It's like eight or ten paints. Uh, you really only need like one or two brushes, and those you could probably get for five, ten bucks. And then a model, you know, and the, the paints and brushes are going to last you forever. The models are really you're going to run out of because you're going to end up finish painting them and have to try another one. But you could do it even cheaper than that. You could try, you could start off with like craft paints. You could go to Walmart. You could probably actually walk out the door with enough paints and brushes to give yourself an idea if you'd want to actually spend the money for like 10, 15 bucks. And then yeah, I would I would definitely suggest the starting off with a used model, something somebody's already put together. But you know, if you wanted to do something along the lines of what I'm actually doing, they make uh, some easy to assemble kits. And I've been thinking about especially since there's a lot of new people doing some just general like model assembly and things videos, I should probably get on that. Not that there's not enough out there, but it never hurts to have some more. Sounds like the dogs are going nuts upstairs. I don't know if you can hear that or not. They're uh, having a good time, apparently. Okay, so there's that. All that's done. The uh, paintbrush with the glue on it can go away, and we need to get some water in this so that doesn't all dry. But what we're going to work off of as far as these go, I've got three that I'm going to use. I've got these little purple flowers, because purple is the color of death. Uh, death magic in this game, so Shayish is kind of the purple realm if you would, which is the realm of death So we're gonna put a couple of those on a couple of these guys I'm Trying to look for some like this one where he's got the I think that'll actually look pretty good. So put some flowers growing out like right at his gravestone Got some little flowers growing up right in front of his gravestone there. And that's really what one of these guys finished just looks like. I just need to paint the base. And to do that, I just want to finish one of these guys for you and then we'll keep going until I feel like stopping here, which I might actually be done with a bunch of them, but get a completed example on the table here oh there might just be enough filthy cape for me to finish one more nope So 
That's alright, we'll use a slightly darker gray. Oh, you're not having D&D? &D? Like, so, if you've been playing D&D, &D, um, starting with, like, a model for one of your characters is totally where to start learning to paint. Uh, d and is actually really good for that because you only have... You know, especially if you're just doing, starting off with just your player characters. You're only gonna have, you know, your model, and then if you feel like painting some for your friends. Um, a buddy of mine was learning to paint. And that's what he was doing. Okay, so that's a finished model. Uh, he's got all of the rust, cool ghost effects, base complete. Just like that. So now we can get rid of the palette. And what we're going to do, we're not going to put things on everybody. So let's pick out some that we are. I usually do about half. In no particular order. All right, so we'll do things on all of these guys. The last one. Oh, he's already got one. And sometimes, like, he's a leader dude. Leader dudes sometimes need more than one. So we'll give him a little bit of rocks on the front of his face, too. These are kind of cool. These are uh, little bits of grass sticking up through some dried up little rock mounds. So I always kind of dug how they looked. Who even knows who that guy was? The armless bandit. Freaking guy whose uh, arm won't stay on. On these flowers, I'm trying to stay pretty small. I don't really want any of the larger flower chunks. more times can we drop it?
And really, I just kind of randomly pick as I go through these. I don't really have a rhyme or reason. Generally, my go-to is, oh, I haven't used one of those in a minute. Try not to stick that one. Finger, we got perilously close there. We think, does this, I think we need another flower. Flowers. Kind of adds to the realism here. He's actually got some cool rocks already. I think he's good the way he is. And he needs a little chunk of rocks right in the middle there. Cover up that weird hole that I ended up with. Okay, so there's all those. Uh, bases are done. Looking nice and finished. So, last thing to do is just to grab our paint back out and finish off these base edges and we can call Chain Horde complete. Just gonna thinner this down just a little bit, but really nothing else. Finished file. And this is always, always my last step on painting. It's kind of like my, ah, I can finally relax and yay, we're finally done step. It's the, uh, it's the victory lap if you would.
realize I got a little more grass on the side of the base than I generally like to, but it won't really be noticeable once they're on the table. Nobody more than a foot or two away will ever see it. I thought was finished earlier was not actually finished. It's a lie. Oh, got to put my leader out in front in a very leaderly position. Leading the way with his magical candelabra. We're getting super close here. Just the last few. And finally call these guys done. I think I've been painting them. I should go back and look when I first posted a chain rest video, but has it been like two weeks? 
I'm actually, it's kind of cool because I videoed the whole thing. I streamed all of the painting on these, so I can go back and see exactly how long it took to paint these guys. I'm hoping I did it under 10 hours. That's what I was going for. That would be... 10 hours for 20 models would be 30 minutes a model. A little bit high for a horde army, but really not bad. Although, I don't know, because today's been already almost four hours, so I think I crept up a little over ten. That's what I get for taking breaks. Last one hype. Oh, except that got all thin, so I'm gonna have to go over that a couple times, let it dry. So there we are. That is a completed chain rasp board. 20 models. Lots and lots and lots of steps. All I think looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how they came out. Let's take one of the first guys we did, so... That's where we're at. Completed base. Completed ghostiness. Lots and lots of rust and blood. Thank you, Shuli. Oh, that's awesome. I'm really happy that we got... I got all that done. I can finally move on with my life. Paint some other cool stuff. I got a lot of stuff to paint. Let's take a look now. I wanted to see... Stuff is still drying, but yeah, I think it's actually gonna do what I was hoping for. They have like a nice textured pile there, which is gonna work exactly like the ones that I had on these other guys. Um, so I think that is actually not a bad way to go. Yeah, yeah, those came out about like you would expect, so. Cool. That stuff's a bit more expensive than the stuff that I make myself, but whatever. I don't know if I'll use that every time or not. All right, wow, we did it. We beat the chain rasp board. Uh, I feel like I just leveled up. Now we just gotta get, uh, gotta get some brushes clean. We'll do that here in a minute. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna paint next. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get these, these models all primed up so that they're ready to paint. Uh, I think I got a whole bunch of them here. So we got, we got lots of options. These are all big models too, so these will be a little bit slower to paint, but like some of these should paint up pretty fast. I think these uh, spirit hosts will do next. These are freaking cool. 
cool models. And they're going to be a lot of uh, airbrush, dry brush. They should go super fast. Uh, there's really not going to be a lot of effort in them, I don't think. Shouldn't take a lot of effort to make them look super cool. But I always say that, and then I always end up painting, like, way longer than I expected to. So, that's a thing. But I got lots of other cool stuff. Um, actually... Uh, one thing I was going to do real quick, let me move these guys, since I got brown in my wet palette right now, these guys can go over on the shelf. I got some terrain pieces I started the other day, and I'm going to put a little bit more effort into them real quick. Because uh, you can't have a bunch of ghosts without having a cemetery, so I started building a cemetery for these guys. So we'll put these up here with their other painted buddies. Because really, this is like the most exciting part of painting, is putting your dudes up on the shelf. I don't know why that is. Then you can be like, ah, look at all these cool painted guys I got. It's epic, man. And then we're just going to slather on some brown paint here really quick. Right. Yes, my chair... My cha you didn't know my chair, chair could talk? Doesn't everybody have a talking chair? And why not? I was thinking there was more brown here than there really is. And the thing when you're making uh, terrain like this, it's exactly like we did on the bases of those guys. Just nice layer of brown, all the same highlighting, all the same grass. The terrain tutor always says that if you've made, if you've based a model, you've already started Taking terrain. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess I should change that back. I wasn't actually planning on doing anything else. But now I am, because... I still have about... Oh, no, actually it's four now. Let's say I have a few more minutes to stream, but no, technically we're done. But that's alright. Thank you, Shuli, as ever, keeping me honest. You would have thought I would have noticed, too, because I, I actually have my stream up in front of me so I can tell when, when I do derpy stuff. And I still do derpy stuff. So this was, uh, this was just an idea I had to do, kind of a little atmosphere piece to go with the ghosts I've been doing is really the whole point of it. Need a little bit more paint for him here. I started this and then I got busy. Never never started the next phase of it, so we're gonna just do that real quick. And I'm gonna 
end up getting some brown on these tombstones, but that's alright, we'll go back and paint these guys, that's easy. Train, train painting is actually a nice way to kind of relax after a, a long session because it doesn't take really a lot of brain power. Like, oh look, I can just slap some of this on. Slap this here, I'll paint around. And we're done and everything's happy. And this, these will take a little while. Like They got probably an hour's worth of work to do the whole thing the way that I plan on doing them, but that's okay. We'll just kind of do them in between stuff as things is drying. Just as a way to stay busy. Alright, hey, perfect timing. Uh, this is... This is a great outro song. It's not over till it's over. Well, hey everybody, thanks for uh, thanks for coming by. Thanks for hanging out. We've been on for four hours now, uh, finishing up the chain rasp board. They are complete. They are a hundred percent done. Oh, I can move my camera back now. So chain rasps are done. I've got a bunch of stuff to prime. I'll get that primed probably today. Uh, maybe tomorrow morning and then hopefully uh have some time to stream tomorrow start working on the next thing on the list i should put up some sort of a poll i i, had, I was going to and then i never got around to it because i haven't used the poll on my new bot but that's all right i'll just figure something out we'll do a poll for next time when i uh have a little bit more time but thanks for hanging out thanks for chatting with me everybody i really appreciate the company as i grind through all this and now I'm going to get out of here and go stretch my legs for a little while. Uh, have a great day, and thanks for being here. See you later, friends. <laughs>